it's really beyond a point your own time and your own skill won't scale you need to find people who get it better than you but you vibe at the value level This episode of Pepper Spotlight is like a powerhouse of topics like creator economy, how to monetize your content, how creators can be independent of algorithms, how to be a better writer. What does this sentence every company is going to be a content company mean for Pepper content and for me as well? And more importantly, how we are building this whole content ecosystem in the world. Today on this episode, I have Anuj with me, who's the co-founder and CEO at Terribly Tiny Tales. If you have been following them, uh, I think that's like one of the very first pages that I used to follow when I got on Instagram, and I still follow them when they are uploading so much of content. They have a newsletter, they have two YouTube channels, they are constantly, you know, putting up reels, animations, and at the same time maintaining that originality and that. authenticity and the style that they have in so many years this this entire conversation is super insightful and at the same time very candid and fun as well so if you're a creator if you're a writer or if you are someone who's just starting into the content space go ahead and listen to this my name is pawan rochwani and this is the 19th episode of our podcast the pepper spotlight you can watch this on youtube or listen to it on any of the podcast apps like hubhop or spotify dana jio sovereign apple podcast google podcast or any other podcast app that you are on this conversation with anuj was pre recorded over a zoom call which i will be your sponsor thank you so much anuj for you know giving us your time to have this conversation i think uh, you are one of the person that i really really admire into the whole creator ecosystem and the content space and really excited to ask you some very curious questions that i have in my mind since a very very long time about ttt and everything that you do so thank you so much for being on pepper spotlight thank you pawan uh, you know i'm uh, a big fan of one the work you've done with platform um for artists and then of course pepper as an ecosystem is very meaningful for india and the world especially for india so um very happy to share whatever little i've learned all the tiny tutorials uh, that have accumulated over time happy to share whatever and then just kind of also have a curious chat with you what you feel um, about the ecosystem so looking forward man super and i think this this can be as you know you want to ask me any questions completely yeah. okay with that and let's try yeah. to you know have let's have it like an open conversation sure uh, and you know there are a lot of times when i usually send questions to my guests but then when i get into the conversation it it somewhere goes into other direction because you know just want to ask uh, more questions based on curiosity and i think same with this conversation i want to let my curiosity drive uh, con- this conversation and the very first thing that you know i uh, admire about a lot of creators like you is how do they manage their time with respect to an organization that you know they are running uh when you're doing so many different projects campaigns into the entire ecosystem and at the same time you are also being a creator yourself um and it's something that i personally struggle with sometimes because to manage my time as a creator and you know having work and you know job and all of those things uh how do you really go about managing your everyday time is what i want to know I think one is the privilege of uh, having built and having an incredible team so I think that I, you know in now today in 2021 I can say that so much of the work is done by folks really better at the verticals they manage than I did um and so that honestly frees some time where I as CEO and um you know as founder i have to kind of look at the overall which is of course not easy it's hard and it takes a lot of time and to kind of make sure that we are heading in the right direction we're growing year on year and those are challenges but i think now uh, you know with some amount of uh, handing over of key responsibilities i have a little bit more time 
um second is weekends are very valuable for creators uh, we are doing this on a weekend and so yeah that's a super power because I, you know the advantage of and again not to sound like a cliche but i enjoy this right like so i enjoy these conversations i am very curious about the creator space and so for me this is this obviously is not work creation of course is is hard work and i'm also still learning you know i i, I look at um viraj and ranveer and varun and um all of these guys were also doing so many things and continue to create and so i learn from them and i'm this just so i still haven't figured the my creation bit fully i'm i'm in early days of that but i hope to create a lot more um in fact i'm launching a newsletter in the coming week um so looking forward to that um just using pepper this podcast as a way to kind of announce it it's called creator land so oh. uh, yeah so I it might evolve some, into a some editions have been out uh, already I've, i've published one kind of draft edition uh, with you know with inputs from roshan and uh, shefali and nikhil so yeah uh, so that's really going to be my creator project which is called creator land and so yeah i'm looking forward to that wow super i really like when people announce their projects or you know <laughs> some big uh you know announcement on this show but definitely when we'll release this we'll also mention the link uh, to your yeah. newsletter in the description of yeah. this episode so just as a, as a a uh, tactic weekend is a superpower if you want mm. to balance two things just make sure you optimize weekends late nights i think mm. there is also time times creative times mm. um and also with the pandemic there is just so much of like anxiety and you know if you let your mind go outside um you can get overwhelmed pretty quickly so i'm mm. trying to just keep it focused and say okay look i can't control you know the macro the outcome but i can kind of i i can create so yeah. and if if that helps a few people then you know i would have done something better with my time yeah yeah you know one question because this is um you know like for i mean i have observed that creators they they sometimes really want to handle all of their work themselves because they're looking for let's say a perfect way of you know publishing it or distributing it and all of those things whereas when you are an entrepreneur you always cannot take up everything in your hand you have to sometimes delegate and you know give your team also that creative freedom that you okay go and you know handle this lead this did you ever face a challenge or let's say a uh, problem about being that entrepreneur also and being that creator also that you know sometimes you don't want to let go of uh, you know and you don't want to delegate maybe do all of it yourself uh, but rationally and logically as an entrepreneur you have to delegate some work did you go through that phase or how was it for you yeah that's a great question and you know every creator has this instinct of being um being obsessive about having creative control over every product and you know i think if you want to build a creative first organization that has to become the culture right so you have to see the values in the culture which is hey look what do we care about we care about in in the case of ttt like for example we care about craft like people shouldn't make something shoddy just for the heck of it so we care about the details i uh, we i mean with text we cared about grammar more than any other pl- platforms and there were many that copied the ttt format um but they became more meme like they became more uh kuch bhi dal do as long as it gets engagement but we really still hold the craft value you know kind of dear to us so that's a value design is a value you know, we really care about how our content is packaged designed um you know how it's consumed so not designed for the heck of it but just as an experience so these are some of the things we care about and so i do care about them personally and over time i think i hope and i think it reflects in the work that and there's a long way to go but i think that these are the values you know i've tried and then over time the team continues to kind of channel these values to other new creators we interact with so mm. i think that has come to represent um you know what we do at ttt and so yeah culture really like what you care about needs to be codified in text ideally but if not in text through just practice yeah uh, and hand it down and yeah eventually you you learn that some people do some things much better than you could mm-hmm. and so they need to do that more than you yeah. uh, and it's a humbling uh, learning 
you know that you're not very good at every creative aspect mm-hmm. but as long as you know you you're a taste maker or a curator for the organization as well i yeah. think that that does the job yeah right yeah. and th- and that's actually what you want to do more than does the job it's really beyond a point your own time and your own skill won't scale you need to find people who get it better than you but you vibe at the value level that's got it and tell us about how you know is the functionality into the whole team and how many people are there currently how was it when you started 8 years uh, back and how do you delegate the work and i think every day you guys post eight pieces of content uh, on social media i am i'm not sure about the app but at least on instagram i see there every day there's so much of content so tell us about how do you actually plan this also as a social media calendar because every social media team really goes about oh how do you plan it at least for the next one month or one week so tell us about how that uh, working happens i think the early days were pretty ad hoc um so i'll just kind of map out the chronology but 2013 was when the page started and that time really i was writing with a bunch of friends and so we were putting out literally one story every day and i was like 8 baj gaye 7:30 baje tak story aayi nahi hai and you know i'm kind of messaging the writer and the creator and kind of waiting on the story but one big learning and thing that we've done since then and that time this ttt was not even a business it was just a page which and i was running an advertising agency on the side um but we just posted one back then one story every day at 8 o'clock and that was like a habit and i think creators forget and it's a learning for me personally which is the reason why we've grown is not because we were always very good but we were always very consistent right we never missed a day like we've been posting for the last 8 years without having missed a single day and so that you know i keep talking about consistency that's a huge differentiator because it's just hard to show up on a daily basis and create right it's a it's work every day is not fun as a creator it's yeah. kind of boring to it mechanical to uh, tedious to right so so i think early days were just like you know like any op- early operations team one person doing everything saying hey bhai tail kahan pe hai tumhari tail design karo usko package karo i was the person who was doing that so and then over time once um, you know we focused and said hey look ttt can become a much larger thing um, is when we started hiring for these departments right so we built out a community team we built out a content team we built out a design team that kind of can do this much better than i could do on my ppt uh so the early tales i mean the tales are still designed on ppt by the way but the templates are designed by people who are much better at doing it um so then the then this the brand team came into being once we got brand partnerships uh so yeah now it's a team of 35 people um across many functions including tech design community sales um growth finance and and the works right so and then there's the video team and then there's um terribly tiny talkies which is a film then like sort of long format division and uh, yeah now the you know how are we able to do eight posts because we we are still part a uh, community right we 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 are not just a p- publisher driven um, organization we also still interact very heavily with with our community we've got 200 writers on this app called the tribe is a cloud based um app in which you know some amazing writers from all over india and the world come and share their stories with us we hand pick those and then there is of course the ttt app which has 350000 users um and so we get a lot of content amazing content there too so i think a combination gives us some uh, meaty you know pipeline to take care of uh, but all the more complicated complex formats which are animation video um those are all done internally by the team so even created for the most parts internally our animation team sits in house mm-hmm. um and so yeah that that is done in house got it and you know coming to a broader uh, topic of conversation here which is you know this this short form versus long form content has the attention span of 
audience on the internet dropped and all of those things while at the same time when people are still watching series like game of thrones or whatever anything else which are like 5 6 7 seasons and such long long episodes um and at the same time when people are also talking about micro blogging or you know creating reels now reels is like a shorter format of a yeah. uh, video side or youtube shorts and all of those things what is your take about this whole let's say argument or the two sides of uh, short form versus long form content is is the attention span of people really dropped or i uh, know people still are interested into consuming articles which are like 15 minute read long and all of those things no i think there is no doubt that attention spans have dropped i think every um every piece of science kind of you know and research tells you that we are now we were in 2016 17 competing with goldfish at 7 8 seconds um so we are definitely and uh, your behavior will also kind of anecdotally tell you that we are not it's a function of context so our attention changes depending on the context i think in shallower context like for example you have 20 minutes to go before dinner and you've got that empty time i think that's when you'll not be able to watch a game of thrones or a netflix show and that's when your all this dopamine need will kick in which is like you're going to quickly go to reels and say oh ye maza nahi aa raha and you'll kind of flick through and go to youtube shorts and you'll go to you know twitter and then you'll jump around basically and so from that point of view i think in in these contexts our attention span is definitely shrunk but you know after dinner when you're very intentionally watching something then we are open to watching slow burning shows like uh, mayor of eastland mm-hmm. game of thrones of course and and so many more right so netflix and amazon prime and all these long format vod platforms are proof that people love a great story and they yeah. spend endless hours watching it yeah but you move them out of that context and put them in their day and if there is anything slightly disengaging boring meandering you know um instagram will quickly pop up or a right. whatsapp message will go on the side and yeah. and so yeah so um, our take at ttt is basically very simple if it's engaging it's tiny right mm-hmm. so you know if if you're having fun watching it if you're not getting bored it short and that's yeah. true of a netflix show that's true of even a reel uh you know kushal kapil a video you if it's engaging you're going to spend 60 seconds if she makes a 15 minute sketch which is as engaging and fun you're going to give it 15 minutes so so it's really uh time is valuable uh and people realize it far more acutely today than ever before in history mm. that our time is I mean you don't think of it very consciously but you know that ye boring hai out hmm hmm um so i think the fact that ads we stopped watching ads hmm. which were massive time sucks on tv yeah. <laughs> i think the skip ad has made us realize that oh man we spent hours gift we gifted yeah. hours to advertisers yeah. in our younger days but yeah so i think when i was watching ipl and you know every time those repetitive ads about <laughs> uh i think about cryptocurrency or whatever investing yeah, in yeah. all of those things came up constantly i was like i'm going to stop watching ipl now <laughs> this is so boring um but you know tell us about how the consumption of audience with respect to short form of content was let's say when you started back then or if you want to talk about 3 years 4 years back or 5 years back as well and compared to today because today the platforms also have evolved in a way where they are offering a lot of short form content and giving let's say uh, prioritization to the short form content like if as of now if you create reels on instagram is is how you will maybe get famous compared to if you keep creating igtv videos or content or all of those things so that's also platforms being prioritizing that kind of content but how was it like 5 years back in terms of audience consumption and interaction or engagement no it's a very good question because you know 5 years ago pavan the um the behavior on instagram was still to kind of consume slightly artistically choreographed personal expressions right so you'd have yeah. a nice photo very yeah. well thought through caption hmm. uh 
even the videos you know were kind of you know instagram was always aesthetic um which was its problem which is why tiktok could become the alter ego and say hey look this is a wild place and we are not judging anyone and you know if you're too straight jacketed here you're going to be left out you got to be really yeah. silly <laughs> uh so but now instagram's on in this like slightly identity crisis mode where um it's i don't know what's it like what it's doing right like i have no idea whether i should post my holiday photo or i should be dancing or i should do like a funny remix video um you know some of the writers i know who were very prolific on instagram and now like this just doesn't feel um like the place it doesn't invite you to kind of create long format content or even kind of do a personal expression piece yeah. so uh, but having said that i think consumer behavior definitely points to people enjoy many people enjoy reels they kind of think of it as time pass how it will play out 3 5 years from now i don't know whether people will get bored of it and say what is this crazy thing but i think uh, people also evolve with formats right like tiktok started as this very random uh, you know like what is happening here and then it evolved into a due talk and like yeah. people were kind of doing like incredible stuff on tiktok and they still do in uh, mm. places where you can use tiktok so so even reels will evolve we will evolve right like we were like what do we do with reels we are like a text based platform and suddenly now we are doing these animated stories and uh we are doing these kind of bite sized videos we have evolved too so i think creators evolve but i think at some point there's some loss too you can't decry mm-hmm. or you can't discount that and i think creators will then need places and which is why this whole creator parallel e- creator economy thesis right which is um patreon substack mm-hmm. uh, closer home we are building something out for the creators on uh, the stag mango and there's just so mm-hmm. many platforms that are now serving this need which is like hey look i can't keep chasing an algorithm yeah um you know this is never ending there are some people who really care about what i originally did yeah. and i don't want to suddenly you know because every creator may not be able to adapt they may not be able to do a a reel and they may yeah. not be comfortable showing their faces in front of a camera and so what happens to those creators i think there will and there is a an acute need for an alternate platform yeah yeah and i think uh this this is how the platforms also evolve i think they how the users the creators you know keep changing what they are creating that's when the platforms also evolve themselves and you know you very rightly said that earlier it was about how aesthetically the image is put you know putting some effort into the caption and all of those things and i i know this myself five years back four years back i used to put like a nice picture right long caption and all of those things but today right. i just put a screenshot of my tweet and just like write like one sentence or maybe just like an emoji in the emoji. caption emoji correct uh, so that that's how you know it has become and at at a point you rightly said that you know it has become like a confused identity uh, as to whether i should put personal photos or i should talk about what's happening in the country and all of those things um but tell me how how are brands still uh, looking at short form of content especially textual uh, because uh, you guys partner with a lot of brands also so how it was like few years back and how is it currently yeah i think brands definitely still work with us on the text based content so that you know while we now offer mul- multiple formats for brands to work with including long format video and we've done some very very good work with brands like Cornetto Dairy Milk Silk um building out web series and um, you know long format content for them but i think we continue to do some very very good text based work too i think because of the fo- the format that we kind of tell our stories in is so unique uh, it's able to capture the brand ethos um very very uniquely compared to an influencer activity which is very um influencer based right so the personality of the brand gets a little erased because the influencer takes over and so mm-hmm. now today whether the influencer is endorsing sunglasses or toothpaste it's eventually you're drawn to the influencer and so it then becomes more ad like 
uh, not ad like but more what, what was that like a television shopping channel you know yeah, where, yeah. where all of these guys are kind of selling you stuff in a very fun engaging manner but you're still buying it for them and not for the brand um, yeah. what we're able to do because we don't have a person or a face um the story and the brand powering the story becomes the hero uh, which which i think brands find quite meaningful today uh, continue to because it's then like hey look we are using ttd for their reach and distribution and their creative talent but our brand is still our brand and it kind of retains their their kind of soul in some way hmm. so so that you know we we are always anxious that brands may not partner on text um because it's a sadly dying kind of medium on social platforms especially on instagram and uh, especially on instagram and facebook also but yeah i think we've continued to grow on text to year on year and so that's heartening do you think uh, because ttd also has their newsletter now so is it like a way of maybe going into long form content or you know what's the idea behind going with a newsletter so yeah we launched a newsletter called btft it's called been there felt that um i think the newsletter is a way one to kind of move closer to our community uh, which is you know we've got 4 million people across social media and now we want to speak to them more closely more intimately and i think the newsletter allows that conversation which instagram facebook youtube twitter does not because you're one amongst many many voices when you get delivered into an inbox you're still you're still more intimate with the creator and so that's one reason second is also to kind of try out this hypothesis ourselves which is will people pay for content um and i strongly believe people will because eventually everyone's going through the cycle of look i i'm eating junk food because i don't know good healthy food exists right so i'm continuing to like you know 10 years ago we didn't think of salads until good salad options came about in india and so then you're like hey look salads aren't as bad as what we were fed forcefully fed in our childhoods uh and there's this whole world of delicious healthy food which i think will be this next wave of uh, the creator economy which is a bunch of creators saying hey look i will put in a lot of work to give you great content but let's keep the relationship clean i won't try and sell you other things i'll just charge you x amount of rupees a month for this and if you really care about my work and me then you will pay me for it and it won't be very um awkward and uh and you know shameful like right now you get all these feelings saying yaar main kyu charge karu mere content yeah. who will pay me uh yeah. it feels very strange no no i'd rather just grow my instagram and um you know get brands or whatever i just main kuch aur kar lunga paise ke liye ye nahi karna hai so mm-hmm. it feels very um uncomfortable mm. and i think we want to change that so you know btft is our attempt first attempt to say hey look uh, you know we are at about 7000 subscribers right now mm-hmm. and you know aim is to get to about 10 15k subscribers and start a pro version mm-hmm. see see where that lands and i think if that lands then we know we can build this loop of uh, paid newsletters paid products essentially and so yeah that's one goal with the newsletter Got it. so i think there are two sides to this whole monetizing of content and you know having a premium version of it and i think a lot of people have been doing this in the west with patreon and you know substack also uh, or independent journalists and some people have been doing it uh, on their own website and all of the sort Correct. of things what i feel it's different in india and i would love to know your opinion about this or correct me if i'm wrong i feel in india we don't even pay for our netflix subscription when there is thousands of you know series or movies about it so i personally feel that you know this whole content monetization is more of an audience problem rather than uh, a creator kind of an effort that's needed because 
we need to really bring them into habit of okay paying uh, let's say certain amount of money to watch this content uh, i i'll give you an example i wanted to watch the friends reunion on z5 i did not have z5 i took it from one of my friend and you know that's how i watched it um even when i'm like a hardcore friends fan but i did not take the subscription for it so i really think this is an audience problem but would love to know from you as to what do you think where is the challenge for india and the whole audience and creators here based out of india i think it's a great question we you know before building up the product that we're building um, i think this was the question that's the, you know the first question is hum paise denge kya like um, you know we we kind of equate us to very value seeking amazon prime feels great because tumhe 1000 rupees mein free delivery plus itna content mil raha hai to theek hai it is the best deal ever i think so two takes on this one is that i think the way we look at ott platforms and the way we look at creator audience relationships i think there's a distinction because with ott i think you you know that there is amazon and a massive company kind of backing um backing a product like that you're you're seeing it as a transaction with a commercial organization right like you're 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 that, that association is has zero emotion it's very value seeking and you're like ha isme mujhe ye 10 cheeze milegi uska worth hai mahine ke 500 rupaye de dete hain versus um your relationship with a creator i think you've seen the creator grow you've seen the creator evolve you build a personal connection with them and so there is a layer of support there is a layer of fandom there is a layer of um attachment which is more unique because it's human right so um so i feel like there is that one big distinction which for example you know i love novel or even say closer home gorav uh, munjal who, who mm. runs an academy i love webbs work um, you know so i have followed some of these creators obviously very very closely and so if some one of these people who you know or stachery for example ben thompsons um i connect with them because they are independent creators who add a phenomenal amount of value to my life and so i would be willing to pay 50 bucks 100 bucks 1000 bucks depending on again you you will still make that math it's not like if a creator asks for 10000 rupees you're going to pay them uh, you'll still do some math but i feel like you know a friend of mine runs this uh, amazing company called your coat harsh nianshu um and they've built out this whole micro payment within your coat um which is 3 bucks 5 bucks 10 rupees i think that's a great model where people can tip um and so i feel like there are those gateways right which is can i pay my favorite writer 7 rupees a month or 15 rupees a month and say hey look i get kickass writing original writing exclusive writing in my inbox and i'm paying what 7 bucks over or 30 bucks or like you know like so yeah. so i i think there is room for that um model which is where it doesn't feel like you're breaking your bank to support your favorite creator one is that second is um with btft we are also not limiting the product to india so we are saying hey look can we keep the world as our target audience so which is why been there felt that is relatable young millennial experiences that involves dating uh, you know coping with mental health issues um with isolation with friendships with p- parent uh, you know child dynamic and so if it works we feel confident that it because it's in english it scalable globally so that is also i think important to keep in mind because for whatever reason if the other hypothesis fails we don't want to be limited to just an indian paying audience because i think saas companies and companies across the country working at very different scales have also learned that sometimes india is not the the highest paying market and yeah. so so if you want to make the most out of your content and so if you if you looked at you know content that scaled for for many years then 
why limit it to just one country especially in today's world you know so yeah yeah i think combination of believing that people will pay some amount to get closer to their favorite creators to learn from them to get original entertainment from them and to also get raw unfiltered content right so these three things if you get from a creator i think there is you'll be like ha yaar i'm getting learning entertainment raw version of the creator take 20 bucks a month i'm if i connect strongly enough i'll pay that money yeah yeah and i think how you mentioned about micro payment that that's like a very good uh, specific feature for the indian audience that that might really work out we we are okay to let's say pay 10 bucks or 20 bucks via ptm or whatever all of those things exactly. whereas compared to having a recurring uh, payment cut to you monthly like 10 dollars or whatever 15 dollars and all of those things because most of these subscription on substack or uh, other platforms are like 100 dollars a year or something like that whereas yeah. for india i think if we build like a micro payments thing it might really really work out and i at least i feel that you know the audience habit should develop even if they pay 5 rupees uh later somehow they will maybe spend 50 bucks or 100 bucks uh, for some other creator if not the same thing yeah i think it's a culture thing right like yeah. we are not used to this because our newspapers have been free or like one buck a day and so as a culture we've not paid for content and for the most part and that's true globally too i think it's shifting there um we're also kind of economically um, more Uh, challenged compared to some of the western yeah, countries so yeah. it'll take a little while longer but yeah i think clubbing a community or let's say like a uh, virtual event sort of thing has been like a very uh, good observation that i have seen that you know a lot of these paid subscription have been doing a separate yeah. community on discord or a forum exactly. and all of those things where exactly. they can communicate with each other so i think maybe clubbing a pro subscription with a community or a event sort of thing can uh, or maybe yeah. an educational thing maybe a monthly workshop along with getting that content i think this kind of combination is what uh, really might work for india because we always gauge uh, are we, what are we get, what are we getting four newsletters in a month should i pay 100 bucks or oh, no plus but, kuch mil raha hai then <laughs> and i think that that's how we have to cater it uh, yeah. for india um but two question that i want to ask you and then we'll just uh, wrap this conversation up sure. one is about how important do you think community building is going to be for a content company or any organization if and and i know for ttt i think it's very very important it's very very crucial or maybe it's at the heart of it because how you were mentioning about the tribe and you know 200 writers yeah. and then other so many other writers who are part of uh, the entire app and the community as well but in general what do you think how important is community building and having a community for your organization going to be no i think there were so many uh, thoughts on this right one is first they said build the tool um, and then the network and then it was um, build the community and then the product right so it's moved from um, and and then if every company is going to be a content company um then i think the natural extension for being a content company is to build a community company um which is what does content do right content invites a bunch of people who resonate with that feeling together it's like a yeah. campfire and so yeah. when you light a little camp one fire and then you you you're essentially saying hey we are a campsite and we're playing these fun songs and there's like a little bit of barbecue happening and so come along and uh then you have a choice whether you're the only one with the mic and singing all the songs and if you're great at that um uh, super then make it a kind of concert but otherwise pass on the mic and you'll find that there is just amazing kind of talent within the community and so that unlocks and i think you know you guys are in your own way building that out at pepper uh, which is kind of building the community and then kind of unlocking the creator within that um, cohort and and so yeah, it's the same thing which is look we do this kind of work if you like this kind of work you'll come to us and then we'll m- make more of this and yeah. i think it's a 
it's a moat because it allows us to consistently be different it allows us to take our audience to different places so and again btft is our attempt at saying hey look we are a community on instagram but uska kya hi value hai um kal instagram ne algo change kar diya like facebook ne and so <laughs> life changes overnight and so our attempt is to build our own community and so the app is an effort the newsletter is an effort and so all those efforts are to just tighten this bunch of people and say hey, look tomorrow we launch a netflix original show we know there are 50000 people who are going to be excited to watch it uh, we are we are going to have 500000 yeah. people and going forward 5 million so so that's the attempt which is like then the content always has a an audience waiting to consume it and that's powerful yeah yeah, yeah. i think that makes a lot of sense and you know one reason why i also feel how this community building in any format it it can be on substack it can be on a forum or discord wherever you want to have that but at least own that audience uh, that you have because how tiktok got banned maybe if instagram or whatever anything that gets banned it's it's just going to be like a crazy thing um one last question and then i'm going to ask you like three smaller on and so, you know, just like the random questions is um because you you and the entire team has been like brilliant and genius and like the best at creating the short format uh, content in terms of text or let's say video as well what what really makes a short form content uh, worth consuming for the audience is is it like hooking them right in the first sentence or it's really about how how it gives an impact in those first 10 20 seconds or what really is like that recipe that you are cooking for a short form of content look with video even i'm not the best person because i'm not the one making them uh but as an audience i can tell you and with text we had a framework and i think that's still relevant for video too which is we we kind of look at three things and if you look at most content that sticks with you i think there are three things at play which is relatability uh, surprise and craft right so with short format this this plays really well you know one is that did it connect with you right so was it a reel about every middle class uncle ever right so that's relatable now surprise is you can do it in so many cliched ways this because this video has been done in so many ways already so can you add a twist to it can you do it in a different style which makes it your own or can you add a twist at the end right with with a tale you often have to care about that with text which is does it leave and you know joel in our team he he says this one thing which is always make sure the end is powerful because uh, you know people forget the beginning but they'll always remember the end so make sure the end of either a video or a text based property is valuable uh and powerful so you kind of stay with it and craft is something we care about which is it's well made because otherwise yeah the internet mess na you <laughs> it just goes it just goes downstream and then if you want to look back at something you made 3 years ago and say hey look it was not so bad you will always have a little bit of a cringe but it should not at least we do want to be proud of the work we put out so because then uh, you know it has a higher probability of surviving um and so yeah these are the three things we care about and i think they are they are still useful got it got it uh and here's my part where i get to ask you some random questions uh the <laughs> no first one is uh what creators do you follow on instagram or across platforms and which are the creators that you really enjoy consuming oh content i'll try and think of the creators uh who are unique and new because i love kullu bazi on instagram you should look up kullu bazi so he's okay. hilarious uh then there is super woman who i'm a big fan of um again on instagram so super woman kullu bazi um these are two i absolutely recommend on twitter um twitter i'm following a lot of tech vc and i think everyone knows who they are from naval to um 
to Paul Graham, who I absolutely, his essays I absolutely recommend, and also his Twitter, but more, mostly his essays. Uh, he's the uh, founder of Y Combinator, and he also, uh, you know, is an incredible writer, the VC. Um, so, so yeah, these are my top of mind Twitter. Anybody that Sahil, you follow, Sahil Lavinia, who who I really like on Twitter too. Um, on YouTube, hmm. on YouTube, I trying to think if there's any unique. The School of Life, which I really continue to love. There's New York Times Modern Love, which they've so. Modern Love has a great journey, by the way, from a content point of view. It started off as essays in in the New York Times, and then it got recorded as a podcast, and then it became animated and- videos on YouTube. Uh, so, which is what I'm recommending. The animation is stunning. Um, look it up, and then um, it finally became an Amazon Prime original. So, so yeah. this whole loop was kind of perfect, you know, for any yeah. content IP. Yeah. Uh, and then there's our our newest channel called Dobara, which I will be very happy to plug because I think it's really cool. Um, we it's gotten great, um, you know, reception already, and so it's always daunting to start a new channel because you know, you forget how much effort it takes to build a community again, and yeah. you know, and so we're back to the drawing board and yeah. you know, doing everything it takes to go to. Thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, and yeah, so. Yeah, but I, I'm coming to a technical question here. Do you think it's easier once you build another strong distribution, then it's easier to bring build like a second vertical or? A it gives you a little bit of a head start, uh, honestly, but not beyond that. Like eventually, you know, it's like you can get your customer acquisition cheaply, but your retention is still the channel. Hmm. and so your attention if the content's not good you could throw 100000 people at your channel yeah. and they'll be like ye kya bakwas hai yeah yeah and so retention is always harder got it okay coming back to another random question what yes. what was the last netflix or amazon prime series that you have been watching i just watched a film last night of sandeep and or pinky farar uh, on netflix it's the latest film by dibakar banerjee on Amazon Prime Video actually, um, it's damn good film, damn damn good film. Absolutely recommend. Um, okay. Sandeep or Pinky Farad, very very good. Okay, what what newsletters are you subscribed to and would recommend people to read? I would recommend this newsletter, two newsletters. One is ava. dot substack. dot com. Ava, uh, it's an independent writer, amazing writer. Uh, who writes on books but is in technology so it's this very incredible combination where she's very um uh, like she comes from a product tech vc universe but she writes about books and the inner world and beautiful essays and then there's zenep zenep is a sociologist who's written a lot about covid um and she's one of the very early advocates of masking um very very early to kind of predict or see more than predict where the pandemic would go and how it would play out and so i've just learned a lot about you know the disease and you know how it plays out in our lives and like she's the one to first say and speak at length about ventilation which we still don't care about um and so you know even if life unlocks i think many people will start going back to office but no one speaks to ventilation uh, which is actually the one of the biggest challenges with covid right it's the, the moment yeah. you throw in and people in an ac room it's gone yeah. um so so yeah th- i mean these are two i absolutely recommend got it what's an insta- instagram or let's say internet trend that you have disliked and, and i'll give you an example i i don't know why i did not like that runway or or a filter or uh that was going on where people like it takes screenshots with silhouettes and all of those things but what are some some or one of the in- internet trends that you would not like what do i not like um no the only thing i don't like uh 
well it's not like it actively dislike but i think a lot of the reels and i think maybe it's a function of the product but i think it feels like everything happens on tiktok globally and then it eventually comes to india on mm-hmm. reels and it looks very some of because it's so western and it's coming from tiktok america some of the yeah. like you know tiktok india was fascinating it it yeah it, you know it had this like really mad stuff and it was a peak especially for many of us who are privileged to be in urban cities it was a peak into our country and it was just so um there was so much to learn because people were doing such crazy things with it yeah. um yeah with instagram reels i just find many of it much of it is just like you know people are just aping a western trend then uh, it's a little boring more than this like i'm like okay like i got two three of these and i'm like <laughs> what next okay last one what is one thing that every writer should not do in order to become a good writer don't be don't be dishonest um i think hemingway said this very beautifully in a movable feast like if you struggle to write any time um always write one true sentence and i i think i hold that very closely because each time you feel like you know you can't write or your writing feels fake write a true sentence right so it could be i'm anxious today or i can't wait for this damn covid to end or i don't have the healthiest relationship with my father and it could be anything which is honest and true and the moment you write truth um well it's going to feel good to at least one person that is you and so yeah i think dishonest writing is it, it doesn't stay and i've always believed with like if you really care about your work and you want it to be memorable then it needs to it needs to be honest got it and i think this has been a very insightful and uh, a fun conversation all together about literally everything about writers about short form content community building i have uh, questions for you pavan though before uh, we please. end this yeah yeah please um, please hmm. tell me uh, how have you one is how have you been through this uh, pandemic and what 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 are you excited about in this thesis of every company is going to be a content company what what excites you about this um this truth almost super so i think first about talking about the pandemic and when this started last year around march april um and i was just back like 28th feb when i was in jim corbett at an event talking about uh, something and when i came back from that event and i was like shit i'm not going to be at any events now at least i don't know for how long and i was like one person who loved traveling and you know going places and all of those things um and then i was locked in my room with my laptop my phone and a television that's there in my room that's that's the worst thing that anybody can do to have a tv in your bedroom uh and this is march or april when all three of these screens are always on like for 18 hours my screen time was literally 18 20 hours in a day and i was like uh and i didn't realize that when it was happening but eventually i realized shit this is making me really restless anxious and all of that and i i literally just burnt out and you know mentally emotionally i crashed inside my head and that's when i took like a one week break and you know just did not do anything literally did not do anything and while this was a period when everything wanted to be evolved into something virtual and mm. me back then when uh, i was running a team they were all you know clueless about what we are going to do next and at that point of time i just felt that it's important first to address my own problems then you know come back and address for the team and for the whole world and all of those things so i took that one week break and from there onwards i always realized that you know every time you know i'm not going to come to a point where you know then it becomes oh now i am in trouble as soon as i realize it and it's hitting me that you know i need to take a break i need to take it before i get to that and point action it in advance yes yeah. yeah so i think that's one thing uh, that i've suffered in the very beginning of the pandemic and since then i have sort of you know maintained that for myself like have strict like screen time and all of those things and take the weekends to really just read watch something and you know just talk to my friends um and that's how i you know have gone through the pandemic 
second thing talking about what i really believe about every company is going to be a content company i think the initial statement about this was that every company is going to be a media company uh and there are more variations about that that this that every company is going to be a community company also and commerce yeah. company and yeah. all of those things but why i really believe and stick to every company is going to be a content company is because as you were also referring that you know ads is something that you know we are now inherently just skipping it uh it's not something that you know people are really fond of consuming uh but content is something that's you know very organic authentic and you know let's just say how this this podcast is right this is a content piece for the organization but it's it's very value driven it's it's authentic it's very organic and you know just real conversation about what's happening into the space but it automatically you know reminds people about the brand also so i think that's how it's going to be advertisement and advertising marketing all of it is going to revolve around content uh and i very very strongly believe in that and that's why i uh, you know have this this is this is also one reason why i you know sort of joined the pepper team saying that oh yeah i, I love the work that you do and uh, i want to be part of this mission where we say every company is going to be a content company super <laughs> thanks Great, thank you so much anuj for asking me that i absolutely love when people also ask me questions in the conversation but i think this was a very very super conversation and thank, thank you. you so much once again for giving your time and i think uh, this was one time when we actually spoke about the ecosystem uh, maybe, and not about we, we should work. we should do this more yeah maybe maybe let's let's do some calls or invite more people let's invite varun viraj and you know just Absolutely. hold conversations about the whole ecosystem but Absolutely. thank you so much once again for giving your time thank you man thanks i hope you enjoyed this conversation with anuj and if you like this conversation please share it across on your social media channels on twitter or instagram stories if you have any suggestions or recommendations for us as to whom we should invite on this show please please feel free to just dm us directly or if you are watching this on youtube just comment uh, on this video and we are happy to you know take any suggestions or recommendations you have my name is pawan rochwani and you can listen to pepper spotlight every wednesday on spotify google podcast apple podcast hub upper jio savan gana wink if there is any audio app that i am missing out on or the show is not there please just let us know and we'll make sure uh, that we are there on all your favorite apps if not please feel free to watch this on youtube as well but thank you so much take care and stay safe